Welcome back to the Business Library. Today we have Ben Albert Einstein. I just found out apparently is uh, the last name on there, which I do quite enjoy. He's a fellow podcast host. Some of you actually might have seen him since he does quite well. I don't know how we got him on our po podcast. I just was asking myself that question today. Somehow worked. So we're really going to go into how do you elevate your podcasting and your content marketing strategy on the different organic platforms and your story on your LinkedIn profile. Then it starts out with COVID. So I want to start there. Like what happened during COVID that made you pursue this journey? Sure. So we'll, we'll start slightly prior to COVID without going into the entire life journey. Um, but Appreciate I had it. developed a lot of different skills in different areas kind of accidentally. <laughs> when I was far younger, I fell in love with the music industry, and I was handing out flyers, at one point setting up MySpace pages, then Facebook pages, hosting events, and I had started a music podcast for my city of Rochester, New York, um, in the States. So I had got a career in marketing going before I ever knew what marketing was, and I found myself in a corporate role as a sales executive at a marketing firm. Um, I was recent to this firm, and I would have told you it was the greatest thing since sliced bread because I was 13th floor in the city, beautiful view. Uh, my The building I'm in is in pictures of the city, like a very good spot, suit every single day. Uh, but I really wasn't super happy. Uh, we can get into that, but I was pretending I was happy, but I was kind of miserable. And then the pandemic swooped in. I was the most recent, first one in, first one out, so I was new. I got furloughed quite quickly at the start of the pandemic um, and kind of became an accidental entrepreneur because I took the sales understanding, the marketing understanding. As mentioned, I had a music podcast in my home city, but Music Ben was non essential. Uh, music Ben was unemployed. So I shifted from Music, Music Ben to Business Ben, started a Rochester, New York business podcast, um, and started a marketing company so I could serve business owners and highlight business owners. Uh, and the rest is not even recent history like this is years ago but now uh rochester business connections is real business connections and i went from accidental entrepreneur to business owner and i'm not looking back so that's the short version for y'all well a bit like mike as he usually says he, he was chronically unemployable i think that's the word he normally uses so i guess you could call him an accidental entrepreneur as well I I know with your podcast, uh, you had someone called Christo on, which is something I'm quite fond of um, in the ways of marketing. Whenever I have a question about marketing, I go and look at his stuff and then I have my answer and a bit more, actually, I feel fully equipped. So how do you go about getting that caliber person on your podcast? Do you want the short version or the the full template? Give me. Uh, I guess give us the full template. Fuck it. We, we have time. We might need a whole 10 hours for the entire <laughs> okay. template. But the thing is, there's a misconception that can some, someone can start, let's say, a marketing podcast and just reach out to Chris Doe on day one and get the yes. They actually might. You made me sound cooler than I am. I'm no guru. If you want true advice, you could go just turn me off and go listen to Christo. No, don't do that. But, <laughs> like, I'm learning every single day, and you have to start somewhere. So you – so baseline. We're, we're going to give you the full template. So plus, minus, equals – I learned this from James Altucher, a mentor of mine, brilliant podcaster. But a plus is a mentor. A minus is a mentee, a client, an audience member. An equals is a peer. If you have too much of any of those, you want to balance. If you have all equals, you're just in a social club. So who in your business is your pluses, your mentors, the people you learn from, the Chris Does? Who are your minuses, your audience, the clients, the people you're serving, and who is the peer-to-peer? -peer? 
like us, you know, Mike Mads Ben, we're peer to peer networking, creating content together. So we need to understand who those people are in the specific industry and audience we're trying to serve. So what are we trying to accomplish here? And we're talking about a podcast, me getting Chris Doe on a podcast. So in the podcasting world, it's who's our audience? Who are we going to serve? A lot of the pluses, our mentors are our guests. We bring on peers. We also might even bring on prospects and clients, or we might bring on current clients as case studies. But who, who are they? What do they hang out? What do they do? We want to be the center of their gravity. So... If you have a marketing podcast, it's fair to assume you're going to attract other marketers. If you do what I did, a Rochester, New York business podcast, it was fair to assume I was going to you know, talk to Rochester, New York business owners. My pluses were the, my guests who I was learning from, but they were magically also minuses because they were guests, they were mentors, but many became clients, and a lot of them became peers and friends. So... What's your niche? Who are you trying to serve? Who are the mentors, the peers, and the audiences in that group? And then you start something that didn't exist before you and become the center of gravity for those kinds of people. So that's the general framework. It's going to look different for every individual person. Then let's say you do that in the podcasting world. You need to get some proof of concept. Now, if you already know a Chris Doe, if you already know a big name person, maybe they're willing to put their chips on you and be your first guest, and that's kick butt because I'll explain how you'll use it. You can ultimately get bigger guests as soon as you get Chris Doe. So if you, if you know any celebrities, that's easy, but a lot of us don't. You need to create a proof of concept. You want to get a lot of episodes under your belt. You want consistency. You don't need to have a massive audience, but you need to at least be able to explain to someone who your audience is. Um, the better metrics you have, you can use those, but you don't really need to use them too much because people are looking for audience type. So if you understand who your audience is and how they, who they are, you can easily explain that to somebody. But what I do at the core is, after you have a foundational podcast, you have systems, you have proof, I use my previous guests as opportunities to get new guests. So there's kind of an A, B here. One, I like to ask that, or we'll do A. I said A, B here, then I said one. A, I ask my guests for nominations. So if Mike is a brilliant business owner, he's going to know other brilliant business owners so i ask for nominations and i use the word nomination intentionally because who doesn't want to be nominated and who <clears throat> doesn't want to nominate somebody so i get as many introductions as possible b i name drop which is just a term for using mads or mike in my pitch in my sentence i name drop previous guests when reaching out to current guests so the food chain of guests is very complicated, but Eric Sue was on my podcast. He co-hosts a marketing show with uh, Neil Patel, Marketing School. Eric Sue was on my podcast. Chris Doe never replied to my message, but I saw that Chris was on Eric's show, and it came out the exact same week Eric came out on my show. So I reached out. I was like, wow, Chris, you literally come up everywhere I go. I was just had Eric Sue on my podcast and I saw and watched you on his podcast. So I thought I'd, you know, check back in and see if this might be of value to you. So it was following up, but it was name dropping Eric Sue. Um, Jasmine Alec is one of the biggest LinkedIn content creators. The way he I got him on my show was name dropping Chris Doe. And the tactical behind the scenes is I'll look at who they're following, who they're engaging with, if they're a content creator, who are they collaborating with. And if I know that Eric and Chris know each other, I can use Eric's name and Chris isn't going to be like, who's that? I know that they know each other. The second main aspect, and then I'll shut up, is I never let a good opportunity go to waste. So every time I listen to a podcast, I reach out to the host and I reach out to the guest. 
I don't want to be a stalker, so I don't reach out to the host every episode. YouTube, I, every time I subscribe, I'll reach out to the, the YouTube creator. Don't do it every time because I don't want to be a stalker, but we'll use Chris Doe as an example. If you listen to his podcast, the future podcast, I think it was something like that, uh, you can reach out to every one of his guests. And it's not to pitch anything. It's to say, hey, Mads, I love the episode with Chris. I list a takeaway. Um, congrats on your success. Here to support you. And you start a conversation. And it's really those two main things. It's n reaching out as much as possible, planting as many seeds as possible, uh, building as many relationships and friends as possible. A lot of hosts don't get reached out to. A lot of guests don't get reached out to. So you stand out pretty easily in that regard. So it's reaching out, never letting a good opportunity go to waste. And then it's name dropping previous guests to level up to new guests or getting nominations from them to get better and better guests as you go. But none of it's possible if you don't have clarity on the podcast purpose, you don't have a foundation, you don't have foundation proof of concept, and you're not patient enough to see it through. So Believe it or not, that's like only part of the template because we can get into follow-up marketing, communication skills. We can get into the exact words in the pitch, but it's social proof at play is at the core of it. Social proof at play, and it's planting as many seeds as possible. Is that helpful? Is or it was uh, We just did a whole podcast. I need to shut up. Well, our previous oh, answer so on helpful. this podcast was from Mike, <laughs> and that was... Reach out was it Jeff Rold, I'm pretty sure. Reaching out to oh, him yeah. saying my, my crowning yeah, achievement. Two a cat and I'm a mum. It worked, but that was a previous that too. Jeff Wald is a real well known technology guy and he had put up a prize, future prize, twelve million bucks if you correctly predicted several things. And I thought, what kind of guy's got that kind of cash? You know, just curious. And I found out in his part time. He's a volunteer NYPD police officer out on the street. Like, I didn't even know they had volunteer cops. So I was like, I want to talk to this guy. So um, I contacted some people that knew him. They're like, oh, you can't get to Jeff. It's like trying to get to Gage. He'll never get to this guy. So I just sent him one simple LinkedIn message. Could you be pleased be at our podcast? Mm. We have two listeners, my mom and my cat. <laughs> You know, here's my phone number. And he called me. He said, yeah, when do you want me? Love it. So, yeah, just uh, and I want the whole audience to know this, you know, be who you are. That's a, it's a big part of getting the right guests for your show. Be who you are. And the people that respond to you are going to be good guests because they, they already decide they, they're willing to put up with you. It's really simply, that's so well said because... The reason I reach out when I enjoy something is because I want to attract more of those people to the show. I want to attract those people to my network. And if you're a silent observer, they don't know that they're helping you. So, yeah, a lot of them will ask to be on the show. And you, your listenership literally can be like our significant others, but they don't even listen. They pretend they do. Someone's <laughs> grandma. Someone's grandma. Yep. And one other person and really big names will be willing to put their chips on you if they see that they like what you're doing. Because it, it, I like the analogy of putting their chips on you because similar to gambling, they invest 30 minutes of time. And for all we know, you become the next big sensation and you support them every step of the way. So it, it's beneficial for everybody. But honestly, I just get lucky half the time. But anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> oh, yeah, us too. Um, and, and you have a much more formalized and obviously more effective approach than ours. Ours is, is more random because we don't plan as well as you do. So I feel I like pretended. we're going to my podcast school right now. Oh, I never said that I did these things <laughs> when I started. I just, if I started again, I would have done it differently because I did it the sloppy spray and pray approach, but I've learned what works over time. But the wisest people, smart people learn from their mistakes. Wise people learn from other people's mistakes. So if, exactly. if we've Ooh. learned what not to do, we can tell you what to do and just skip the not to do stuff. But if you fail, who cares? Like you just keep going and you oh, yeah. as you go, you know? 
Yeah, that 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 kind of brings me into a question I want to ask you because one of the questions I often get asked, and I have my own answer to this, is what platform do I pick? Where do I start? Um, what's best for me? What is your answer to a question that just starting out on that marketing journey and want to have the right start and, and pick the perfect platform? You ask all those questions you just asked, but instead of saying I and me, you just replace it with audience. What mm. platform is my audience on? What's best for them? It goes back to the plus minus equals. Where do your mentors hang out? Where do your peers hang out? Where does your audience hang out? Hang out there. I don't want to oversimplify it. You can crush any platform with the right strategy, but I like business tips and personal growth. And I'm more on the copywriting, graphic design end of things. Like, uh, So LinkedIn works well for what I like to do. If I was a fitness model, I would be on Instagram. If I was a dancer, I might be on TikTok. Uh, it really just depends on where my audience is. So not to oversimplify it, just figure out who you want to help and hang out on the platform that they hang out the most. Not to say you can't try and dabble with different opportunities, but that's the foolproof way to do it. Just hang out where the audience already exists. I like that. And and here in the business library, we we like the simple approach. We don't want your 79 steps to success. We want your preferably one step to success. I know that might be overstressing it a little oh. bit, but I prefer those. One step to success. Oh, let me know if anybody's figured that out. Uh, to me, oh. people think success is a... Here's the thing. There's the practical and then there's the nuance. People yeah. think mm -hmm. success is a straight line. And there are different things you need to go through, but success literally looks like you chugged 16 bottles of wine and you tried to draw a straight line upside down. It is a sloppy scribble. Oh, yeah. That being said, if someone has a playbook and it works, follow their playbook, but it might not always work as perfectly as we expect. I have scenario is different than all advice is situational at least the good advice is i agree with that yeah oh good we can get uh, gonna agree on one thing at least that was good I, uh... advice you just gave uh, so, sometimes i say why is that <laughs> he does We're that not sometimes drugs in denmark not always so like we talked you just mentioned a little bit about that Journey to success is whoop, 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 uh, and a bit all over the place. I was just, for our listeners that's only listening, I was just moving my hand all over the place, basically. <laughs> the sound effect got the <laughs> got it pretty good. Uh, uh, well, thank you for that. I'll take that into note, though. Try to make more sound effects and they, they do least like less voice description. Um, those always annoyed me. We, I used to have like a software because I'm dyslexic, and that would read out everything on the screen. The problem is, as soon as you moved your mouse, it would start reading. That would get really annoying, really, really fast, because I'm like, just shut up. Uh, just, just, yeah. So, <laughs> and go, going back to the subject is, what is the thing that kept you on the right path whenever you took those detours? Yeah, um, what's the right path? I didn't know. Um... To answer that question in the most authentic way possible, I am insatiably curious. Um, I firmly believe that you're either evolving or you're depreciating. And life is a constant evolution. Business is a constant evolution. External circumstances change your environment all the time. We can't control everything. That mindset made the topsy-turny confusion. You think your North Star is north, but it's actually south, which doesn't make any sense, <laughs> but entrepreneurship doesn't make sense sometimes. Your North Star is south. Like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me as I say it. But being curious and being willing to learn every single day, um, I struggle with this, but I wasn't comparing my success 
or by placement um, to other people because we're all on a different journey. And I went in the wrong direction. I worked on a project for eight months and literally in 45 seconds decided I didn't want to launch it. So it's just eight months of, you know, five hours a week for eight months, basically just completely tabled and never utilized, which was fine because we make mistakes, we learn, we try different things. Uh, but if you main curiosity, if you're always, because curiosity is everything in life. You can learn something new yeah. from everyone. You can learn something new from every podcast, every book. You can learn something new just by spending time outside with your thoughts and nature. So curiosity and a love of learning makes the craziness actually not that crazy. It's just life for me. It's just, it's fun. I enjoy it, you know? So true. And you're the first other person that's heard, that I've heard say the saying of you can learn something from everyone. It's something I often say to myself, mm -hmm. especially when I'm demotivated for like a networking call, a one on one. Oh, yeah. Why did I book this one? Learn something from everyone. Kind of just it neutralizes me and, and open up my brain. So I'm not just closed off and the call sucks. Sometimes what you need to learn from them is how to be more patient, <laughs> yep. which is yeah, a skill in sure. itself. Or, or the to... classic when you get the, the, the networking call that just, you, you just have opposite chemistry to this person. You're never going to work together. And what you're learning is who is that person's friends? Who are they doing business with? Who's their audience? Because those are the folks I'm not going to serve. It's not going to work well. Yeah. And you can even learn that. And then you walk away with really good feelings about the call. It's like, okay, that person has a totally different thing than me. And that that's good to know that. It's, I've left calls feeling like that drained my energy. And mm -hmm. that's kind of a good thing because I get introspective. And I think next time I'm on a call like that, how can I navigate it differently? So it doesn't drain my energy. So we cut it short or I know the, like it's not everyone's going to be exactly like us. So we need to kind of be chameleons based on the circumstance sometimes. So a bad networking call might be a good networking call. It was just bad for Mike and I, although I think we'd have a good call, but you get the point. Oh, we would. Yeah. yeah. I remember sales call Moss and I were on. It was really interesting. The guy was so obnoxious and one of these money first people, Come All he on. cared about was putting money in his pocket. And we're like, we can't. And we can't work with this guy. <laughs> but Moss gets really embarrassed by me sometimes. I just It just slipped out, but I didn't really care. I just looked at the guy and said, how does it feel to be that obnoxious all the time? I, and it was just a say? pattern interrupt, right? I created that cognitive dissonance. And all of a sudden he was like, I'm not obnoxious. <laughs> like, Yeah. And it turned into a really good conversation. But sometimes we just have to take that step to, to go after what's bugging us. Yeah. But Moss was still embarrassed. I, w I was banished from sales calls for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's more, I have more fun if I do something like that myself. But I'm like, wait, wait, what did he say? We don't speak to people who are like that around here, Mike. Yeah, but it it's it's happened before when I've been on a sales call uh, and I thought, why didn't I just end that earlier? Why did mm -hmm. we sit around for that extra 15 minutes? We didn't need to. It was quite clear there was a disconnect after the first 15. Like nothing valuable was going to come out from that situation. And that's I'm... just sometimes like, do yourself a favor and just be an asshole for 10 I'm seconds. I'm so and happy then you goal. guys are saying all, you guys are completely right. And everything I said about myself, about liking learning and curiosity actually gets me in those situations quite often. Um, and then the person on the other end loves talking to me and like wants to do a follow up. And then I have to break the news that I never want to talk to them again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, it's kind of awkward. Like, kind of awkward. You, because you listen so good, you're just like, I don't, I, it's not even because you're at that point a good listener. You don't know what to say. You're like, yeah. I'm and we confused. just, I, I don't know what's going on here. Like, neither what's, one what's... of us had a desire to be salespeople. It was like, I'm, I'm super techie. Moss is super techie. That's our, that's our jam. 
that's where we're providing value. The podcast is a way to get to talk to people, which we love doing. Yeah. And the sales thing just kind of, we fall into it backwards. And we've even had the good luck sometimes, similar to what you just mentioned, Ben, when we're talking to someone and we just have to, it, it, you know, when it becomes obvious we're foggy, we're like, look, we're not salespeople. And they go, yeah, I figured that out 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and it just defuses everything. It makes it so easy. You don't have to be salespeople. I mean, if you guys are techie and you're smart and you create good products, like sales is really just solving problems. And if you get into <laughs> the best way to sell, it's making the distance, making the, their own capacity to solve the problem feel really difficult. Like the bridge between where they are and where they want to be is quite difficult and you're bridging that gap. And you don't want to pretend like you can bridge the gap, but if you can actually solve their problem, you don't really have to sell. You just present a solution. You act like a doctor, say, hey, we've diagnosed this problem. This will help you. If it doesn't, we'll give you your money back. And then, boom, you could sell all day long. But you're not really selling. You're just finding solutions to problems. Well, it's good to hear somebody smarter than us say that because that's what we had always believed to be true, but we didn't have any proof until now. So thank you for that. I'm yeah, good at talking. Invented. I wouldn't call me. You guys are probably smarter than me. I'm just a talker. We could probably start a company together. I'll pretend like I know what I'm talking about, and you guys will actually create the products. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some, there's some big companies created that way. Stevie uh, I, I, uh, I can think of several. If we may, I might maybe even invested in one, which is why I remembered them very fondly. Lost all this money, at least in that investment. Uh oh. Uh, might have happened. I don't actually don't know. I'm just making assumptions here. So one thing I'm going to make sure I ask you is we kind of have covered a little bit of how you do this, but how do you actually go about and get a podcast at the top 1%? I'm asking for myself primarily. Um, if somebody else gets value from it, great. I don't have a perfect answer. And um, I don't even know if 1% should be the goal. If we go back to like understanding our audience, like I'd rather have a hundred raging, excited listeners that are advocates for what I do and bring in business and start conversations and I can build a community. I'd rather have that community than a massive podcast that doesn't generate any income or any business for me. Now, the goal is to have both, obviously. Build a community and generate income. Um, but really, like, it depends because if you have a niche podcast, you will have a smaller audience, but your audience will be more engaged. If you have a more generalist podcast, you have the capacity to build a big audience, but, I mean, we see it all the time. People are all oh, too many topics. They can't build an audience because they're all over the freaking place. So I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. The number one answer is make sure you choose a topic, a format, a style that you're willing to be patient enough to follow a long time horizon. This is going to be so contradictory, and I love it. Be patient enough to follow a long time horizon and be incredibly impatient simultaneously. And what I mean by that is promote it. Don't be afraid to set up an email list and spam your readers with as much as possible. Ask people to share it. They won't share it, so ask them again. Get your guests to give you reviews. Get your audience to give you reviews. And really, like, the, the core best thing you can do is exactly what we talked about earlier. And let's just assume you're having guests because if it's not a guest-based show, it's completely different advice. But if you're having guests, continue to level up. Because your brilliant guest knows other brilliant people. So get nominations and then start leveling up guests by uh, basically standing on top of giants as you go by getting better and better guests, name dropping guests, um, and make sure that they fit your audience and who you're trying to serve. And again, it's be impatient, like do as much as you can, grit, work hard, but be really patient 
because 1% doesn't happen overnight. And you might not get to 1% and you might not even need to get to 1% to have an affluent podcast, an affluent business. Um, so my two word version would be, it depends that your podcast, the strategy will look different than maybe the listeners podcast and a blog will look different and an Instagram will look different than a LinkedIn profile. So it really depends, but I think those are cornerstone basics uh, to be patiently impatient simultaneously. <laughs> yeah, those are, are two very good ones. Yeah. Well, it's all about yeah, playing the long game and being okay with things taking time, but also in the same aspect of it, wanting them now. So you actually put in the maximum amount of effort each day, because uh, at least this is a trap I fell into myself when I first started making content seven years ago. I was like, hey, I'll, there's plenty of time. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And then you end up just posting a lot less than if it was like, well, I want it and I want it now. Actually, I wanted it yesterday. That would be preferable. <laughs> It's I what I gave was more holistic advice for everybody. What you just touched on is more the tactical advice. Like, put it in your calendar, follow a system, x amount of episodes per month, same time, same day. Like, is it weekly? Same time, same day, every single week. Is it bi-weekly? Is it twice a week? Have a calendar. Have a system. Have a content posting calendar. Have a content posting system. Set up your processes. Um, we could get really tactical in any of those things, but it's literally more is more. And so try it all and double down on what's working. But it really depends on what works best for you and your audience. So true. Um, a question to kind of follow up to that is with if it's a big podcast or niche podcast, unless it's very, very niche podcast, you're going to have competition. So how do you stand out against the other noise? How do you differentiate yourself, make yourself unique? Yeah. Um, I flirt with like, do I want to be, di I don't even know if I care that much. Um, well, I guess what, that's different. Than yeah. Most. <laughs> like, I really don't care what my competition's doing. Like it matters so little to me. I'm going to bring on great guests who create good content. We're going to love the heck out of it and it's going to grow um, comp more competition, the better. I don't really pay that much, uh, attention to it. The one thing that I will say that's a little more practical, but also a little existential simultaneously is why do they take your fingerprint when you get in trouble? It's because you have a unique fingerprint. You have a unique DNA code. You can follow, you can follow any system from any other person you want and it might work. But you need to bring yourself to the conversation. Share personal stories. This is this is good advice, actually. People literally, they might find your podcast through us SEO. We could talk headlines all day. There's so many things. You can SEO optimize your headlines and they find you. But they don't stay because they found one episode or they found one guest. They stay for you. So you need to bring your own stories to the conversation. You need to bring your own flair. People ask all the time, how long should the episode be? Well, how long do you enjoy being on the episode as the host? And how long can you keep your audience's attention? So similar to how you have a fingerprint, you have a unique DNA code. Your podcast is unique simply because you're doing it and the average person down the road's not. So... I really don't pay attention to the combination. I just do Ben and hope it works. Not the best marketing strategy. I'll, I'll admit that. I, I just do Ben and hope it works. And guess what it does? And guess what happens when it doesn't? I still enjoy myself. If I bring on someone who escaped a cult, which I did, two-part episode, couple who escaped a cult, it was not in my typical line of episodes. Maybe I lost subscribers. Maybe I gained subscribers. I didn't care because I wanted to talk to a cult whistleblower. So call me arrogant, but sometimes you just do. You just have a little bit of fun, you know. It, 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 it you get to choose. You get to choose what you do. I think you touched upon something very important there. 
um, in picking the guest you want to speak to. Like, we didn't pick Ben because Ben had a big podcast or spoke to Christo. When I asked Ben to be on the podcast, I didn't know he knew Christo. I knew he had a podcast because it was in his headline. I was like, bit bit hard to miss. But it, we picked Ben because it was like, this is a chill guy. I, would, I like speaking to him. Mm. And that's going to make for good content because we can have that back and forth banter, joke about and not just bore you with 35 minutes of business because you can get there plenty of boring places um, everywhere else. That's flattering. I thought you I thought you just only want to be on because I met Chris Doe one time for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the questions and I was like, I, I saw his face and I was like, that guy seems familiar. And then I went on YouTube and checked and I was like, I have to ask about that because I'm curious. I, 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 I can't not ask because if I don't ask, I'm just going to ask afterwards anyway. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's no. I, feel, I feel like it was a great compliment. It's like when someone's good looking and you're like, wow, they're very good looking. And then you meet them and they have a good personality as yeah, well. Same thing. <laughs> same thing. Just opposite. Opposite. Exactly. <laughs> good personality. Then you notice. Oh, oh it's like a pet pal. It's like a pen right. pal. Yeah, yeah, It's a yeah. pen pal blind date. You show up yeah, thinking they're no. going to be ugly and they're gorgeous. It's perfect. Yeah. and it, Well, the, we try to stay unique by keeping it very conversational down to earth. Which we don't have any choice appreciate. about being unique, Moss. We're, no, we're no, outlining no, no, no. data points of the curve of life. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we'd have to try very hard to be within the box. I probably would be asleep both of us after 15. Yeah, but box, we don't even see the box. Yeah, I, I like that actually. Burn the box. You throw the box out the window. Who said yeah. there was a box in the first place, actually? Exactly. Remove whatever I said. It's true. I mean, it's I'd I'd rather have a small it can it doesn't have to be a podcast it can be anything fill in the blank but i'd rather have a small podcast that i love what i'm doing than a big one that i just feel miserable like it like feels like a chore like and the goal is to have not miserable but the goal is to have both success and to love it but i'd rather love it than have success and hate it yeah I think that's the best advice that you're going to hear today for the audience listening and watching. So let's actually cut it off there just because I don't think there's much better advice. However, if you want more advice, where should they check you out, Ben? Um, where could they find the podcast? I, th you're, I think you're selling me short. I could come up with even better advice than that. What go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> shoot, shoot all off the advice you want. No, in in order to get that advice, you're going to have to hit subscribe wherever you have uh, your viewing or listening to this right now. Hit five stars if it's an option, a thumbs up if it's an option. Massive brownie points if you leave a comment, leave a review, anything like that. And you can find what I'm doing. I mentioned Rochester Business Connections. That's where I've started. I started Niche, and I've kind of rebranded a more international it's now called Real Business Connections. So if you type in Real Business Connections anywhere you found this or Google it, you can find me. And 98% of the advice isn't coming from me. It's coming from my incredible guests. But um, once you show love here, would love if you maybe don't unsubscribe here, triple subscribe here. <laughs> and if you, if you have time, if you have time, then possibly consider my show uh but show some love here first because i mean this wouldn't have been possible without you too so i appreciate it well, i might have to do a little bit of editing and that that might have to be a new outro can you triple subscribe is that a thing <laughs> well i guess it, why not I, I, I appreciate the triple subscribe because then uh, they subscribe unsubscribe and subscribe again this is what you need to do i don't care what platform you're on you need to go to google voice and you need to get as many phone numbers as they'll let you have. You need to make 50 accounts. 
and you need to subscribe on each individual account. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And if you do that, you win a prize. Uh, now I'm curious what the prize is, but I guess that you will only know what good. you've done to... Mm, I like that. Yeah. Okay. You gotta follow the steps, Moss. Just like anybody in the audience, you gotta follow the steps. Thought there was hacks the prize. Into a host. You make the prize up on the spot when someone actually does it. If someone's that kind of crazy to do it, I'll, I'll, it's, it's, yeah. What is the prize? See, don't, don't say it because I, I can come up with an example. Pepsi once, um, it was like some sort of competition. I think it was in Latin America. And if you bought a certain amount of Pepsi bottles, they would win a jet, like a mm -hmm. military jet. Um, they didn't think anybody would do it. The problem was somebody didn't. Right. <laughs> and they have to go to court if this, guy, if this guy should get his fighter jet or not. So I prefer it. We don't, let's say if we don't, we don't over deliver. So let's just leave it a oh. mystery. I actually like that. Well, and everything I just described is definitely against terms and services to just get 50 phone numbers and subscribe. I think that's like yeah, so. spammy bot oh, kind yeah. of stuff. So um, I didn't tell you to do it, but if you do it, I won't be mad. There you go. Um, and we definitely, <laughs> wink, 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 won't give you a prize if you do do it. I won't give you a fighter jet or whatever Pepsi pretended they were there gonna you get go, man. yeah yeah let's fighter jets are quite expensive and let's not get involved in that um, well, no one's actually gonna do it though <laughs> until they do yeah well let's hope uh, that's yeah. in a wild might so we have a little bit more revenue coming in because i don't think kids yeah. on the butt unit at this point 